they've been flying overhead to survey this damage to figure out if it was a tornado. Not a lot of snow falling right now. We have nothing, but take a look down here. Definitely some accumulation. The door all over the place, and it's the same situation wherever you look inside here. The coroner's office has just confirmed for us that one of the victims in this double shooting has died at UK Hospital. Apparently crashed through a fence here, drove through a field, and then came to a stop right next to a creek. The scary situation for that officer who says he was driving down the road when all of a sudden his back window shattered. It uprooted several trees like this one here on Ficklin Road, but in this case the damage was way more extensive. That little girl who police say had been abducted was found here on the UK campus last night by UK police. She was more than 2,000 miles from her home. So why the big crackdown by Lexington police? They say one look at the stats and you'll see for yourself. LEX18 did some digging and found these documents which show that Lewis might not have been telling us the whole truth. Identify the man responsible for shooting and killing a high school football player with a bright future ahead of him. Now they're just trying to track him down. A warrant has been issued for the arrest of 20-year-old Ernest Wheeler III, charging him with Wednesday night's murder of Patrick Puckett. Josh Breslow joins us live with the latest. That murder warrant is, of course, very good news for friends and family members of Patrick Puckett. People have gathered here at Castlewood Park tonight where a vigil is set to begin in just a few minutes. How people are remembering Patrick in the LEX 18 Big Story at 6. Once a warrior, always a warrior. Before Patrick Puckett became a starting linebacker for the Bryan Station High School football team, he was a student at Winburn Middle. He was athletic. He made good grades. Teachers adored him, calling the boy a role model. He would take students with disabilities, students with severe disabilities, under his wing and look after them and take care of them. When Patrick's former educators learned that he'd been murdered Wednesday night, shot and killed in an apartment on Ryan's Circle, they just wanted to help. This is a great family, and they raised a great young man. Uh, kids don't turn out this way by accident. We just want his memorial to be representative of him. The 18-year-old's family has started the Patrick Puckett Memorial Fund at Fork Bank because they say they don't have the money to bury Patrick. He's just so special that nobody could ever take his place. He means the world to me. Like He was just my everything. He was more than just a cousin to me. He was more like my brother. Patrick's former teachers and family members hope the community can rally together to help. I would just urge people, you know, to, to make a donation and uh, help out this family because they're very deserving. People should really help because we need a little bit and we just want to make it amazing because he was such an amazing person. Once again, that memorial is set to begin here in just a few minutes at Castlewood Park. We are told there will be a candle lighting, so if you are in the area and do want to stop by, you still have time before this all starts. We will have much more on this coming up later today on LEX 18 News at 11. We're covering the news live in Lexington from the LEX 18 Mobile Newsroom. Back to you. Logan Howard was a kindergarten student here at Letcher Elementary. Today, grief counselors were called in to help students and staff to cope with the loss. It's a loss Logan's mother says she just can't even begin to comprehend. He was my everything. <laughs> when Jamie Sparks learned in 2010 that her then three-year-old son Logan had beaten cancer, she felt he was somewhat invincible. It's not often that somebody survives <laughs> and he appreciated everything. Sparks never could have imagined that just two years later, she'd be forced to plan Logan's funeral. If he met you, you were automatically touched. He just had the smile and his personality. The five-year-old was at a birthday party Saturday in the Blackie community of Letcher County. Logan was driving a battery-powered truck when he suddenly slammed into a trampoline. He hit it with his forehead and it broke his neck. That party thrown by close family friend Diana Combs, who says there were adults all around supervising. Right before it happened, I said, hi, buddy. And he said, hi, Greedy. And that's the last I got to say to him. Family and friends now left to grieve the little boy who had a love for superheroes. A cancer survivor, they say, was a superhero himself. He was always taught, Mommy, buy, we need to buy something for these kids so they can have something while they're doing their treatments. It's just how he was. Logan's funeral will be Thursday afternoon at 1 at Jeremiah Missionary Baptist. We are covering the news in Letcher County from the LEX 18 Mobile Newsroom. Back to you. Lemonade! 
When life hands you lemons, all the money's gone to the tornado damage. They say make lemonade. You just want to like cry about it because all those people have lost their homes. When 10-year-old Jaden McCoy saw firsthand the destruction in Menifee County, it hurt my feelings that all those houses damaged and I wanted to help out. She did just that, setting up shop in downtown Frenchburg. All right, quit, 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 quit. Along with fellow friends Cassidy and Aaron Adams. Signs raised high. It's a dollar twenty-five. The three watched as the money poured in. Oh, we have a lot of money. In just two days, the three collected more than seven hundred seventy dollars to be given to those affected by the tornado that hit Menifee County. Jaden's mom, Stephanie McCoy. She's a very persistent little girl. Proud as could be. I'm just thrilled to know that I've got a daughter that cares that much about other people. And while the lemonade ran out after two days, probably about a half, the generosity just kept coming. I'm sorry, man, but we just ran out of well, That's fine. I'm just going to give you money anyway, honey. It's incredible to think that people that might not actually even have it to give, give their last dime to it. Jaden and her friends, hopeful others their age, will also be inspired to help in the wake of such devastation. You did a nice job. Thank you. And oh, God bless you. Police say over the years has gotten worse. And based on what the department's seen so far, they say this year a record number of drivers will be blowing through red lights causing wrecks. Josh Breslow shows us how they're working to combat the problem as LEX 18 investigates red light runners caught red handed. From a young age, we're taught green means go and red means stop. In Lexington, though, it seems some people skip that lesson. Take, for instance, last month, a person had to be cut from a vehicle after this three-car wreck at Manowar and Maple Leaf. Days earlier, a three-month-old and two others were hospitalized following this accident at Manowar and Todd's Road. And in February, on Versailles Road, a crash caused a driver to be thrown from a van. Investigators determined all three were caused by blowing through a red light. It's a cultural problem here in Faye County. It's been going on for years. With the number of Lexington drivers running red rising year by year, police say their solution is to step up patrols at close to a dozen intersections deemed problematic. And LEX 18 went along for the ride. Within a minute of watching at Broadway and High, this guy failed to stop. He admits he was wrong. Did you have any advice for people? Don't do it. <laughs> it ain't safe. It ain't safe. Take your time. And seconds after parking at Nicholasville and Row J, another. I'm going to assume you know why I stopped here. Uh, not really. Well, you didn't stop at the red light when you made the right turn there on Row J. Did you run the red light? Uh, he said I didn't come to a complete stop. So why the big crackdown by Lexington police? They say one look at the stats and you'll see for yourself. If we stay on this pace, we'll have a record year. Checking the facts, for the first four months this year, the department tells me they've already worked about 750 crashes, and that's just at intersections. The top contributor? Running lights. Compare that to last year, when officers say they saw more than 400 wrecks resulting from drivers going through red. Enforcement is what it's going to take um, to gain compliance and try and curb some of the property damage and the injuries, and you know, that's the course we're going to take. So the next time you consider red to be the new green, you may want to think again. Don't do it. <laughs> it ain't safe. Covering the news in Lexington, Josh Breslow, LEX 18 investigates. For a list of the worst intersections for red light running crashes in Lexington, visit our website, lex18.com. Well, Nikki, with just a few hours left until the big game, Wildcat fans are heading to stands like this one on Nicholasville Road to buy up all the merchandise, including hats and even the shirt that I'm wearing right now. Some of them getting a little bit more creative, making their own things like Josh Harrelson's favorite, jorts. Eat my jorts. Go Cats! Wildcat fans rocking the jorts. Now that's more of the jorts style. I'm here to work, but I'm here to party and have yeah. a good time. <laughs> In all shapes and very uncomfortably short sizes. Harrison started stepping up his game was doing so good that everyone decided to do a National George Day. So on March 1st, everybody wore the jorts. And now, the jorts everywhere. But not everyone can get a pair. We couldn't find jeans to fill with the dog, but this dog is named Rupp. This He's been Rupp. a fan his whole life. He's two years old. Go ahead, Rupp. You can wear my hat for a little bit. 
He's the biggest fan we got. Other fans went the traditional route. Stand after stand after stand of t-shirts, hats, pom-poms scattered along Nicholasville Road. Well, we've got several different shirts, so it's been hard for people to decide which ones they want. Traffic to and from the stands picking up as the Cats fight for their spot in the championship game. Oh! And with just about three hours left, you can head out to one of these stands to buy your own stuff or maybe make a little something. We are covering the cats in true blue Lexington from the LEX 18 mobile newsroom. Nikki, back to you.